You are listening to the High Performance Interviews, and today I have with me Monica Bozunov from Sweden in Trollentan. Welcome, Monica. Thank you, Lucy. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so looking forward to this. I'm so looking forward to it too, my friend. So I'm going to introduce you first. Let's give a little introduction, and then I'm going to ask you for a little bit of your background and where you've come from and where you're at at the moment, because Monica is a coach and she works with high performance entrepreneurs who are tired of pushing through and want to do more with less effort. How fantastic does that sound? Wonderful to me. So Monica, I'd love to find out more because that's where you're at at the moment. But that's not how you started out your career, is it? Mm -mm. So give us a little bit more about where all that began. Mm -hmm. Well, I always say it started with my own mess. That's how I get started. So I do have a background in construction and property development and management. And usually when people ask me what I used to do or where I come from, I say, construction project management because that's something that people can understand all of the other jobs it's like uh, what does that even mean but that's something that's very okay I get what you do Mm. so I have a background in very practical it needs to work yeah practical work just getting things done and then coming into the whole coaching industry there was a lot of oh, you're going to feel so much better. You are going to heal. We are going to focus on, you know, everything, all the things that you've been through, but not necessarily result focus. And like being in the flow of being coached, right? There are a lot of people that do coaching that I find is very sort of rule coaching, right? life coaching so that you feel better and I'm very pragmatic I want it to just work and give a result which is why I never went I I have never been in therapy you know I was going to ask you that I said I was going to ask you have you been coached or had anything like therapy like I've Mm. never had therapy I've tons of coaching loads of coaching Mm. I've never had therapy I'm very pragmatic. If it doesn't work, then coming from a place of building and managing big physical complex structures and then coming into the softer, more human-oriented space, the way people go about it is very different. How did it happen for you? Because that's, it's, like you say, it's different for everyone. What made you transition from the construction industry, as we're going to call it that, into becoming a coach? What was there, a aha moment? Was there something that happened to you? What went on in your life to go, that's the direction I'm taking. I'm going over here. Yeah. So that did not happen overnight. (laughs) (laughs) But I had the privilege of being burnt out and depressed at 30. Which, looking back, was the best thing ever. Because I had to question how I was operating in the world. And it was very clear early on that, oh, I do have you know issues with boundaries. Uh. So whenever, you know, being raised a good girl, Whenever people ask you to help or serve or do something for them, you go, yes, of course, right? And you jump in. And I remember my my husband was standing next to me, even though as I was on the phone and someone was calling and, you know, wanting something from me, demanding that I be there for them. And he was just like, just say no. I could read on his lips, just say no. And I couldn't. So I bought this book about how to say no. Oh. I read the book. 
I was none the the wiser. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to ask you to give our audience the name of the book. If it was good, don't, if it you didn't do you any good. Okay, moving on. Well, reading a book <laughs> doesn't necessarily make it, like you have the knowledge, but you don't know how to implement. Yes. And I understood that it wasn't, I tried all the mindset stuff and it didn't help me. Mm. Remember the Dan Daniel Goldman books back in the day about oh, right. intelligence? And I read those and it was like, oh, there's something about emotions that, you know, because I do come from a culture where emotions are kind of frowned upon. Yes. Yes. Because you were born in Norway, right? Yes. So yeah. I'm a Scandinavian. We do not mush around with emotions that much. Stay in your head. And I kind of ignore that I'm a deeply emotional person. <laughs> uh, and that there's there are some consequences to ignoring emotions constantly. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> they get locked up inside you. And then yes. <laughs> I was explaining it to someone today and talking to her today. And she has been doing exactly that, Monica. And I said, it's like a tin can that's gone out of date and the lid starts to lift, but it's got that pressure and you can see it if it was allowed somebody put a little thing inside it would just go <laughs> yes <laughs> and she went like that because I allowed her to open and lift her lid yeah yeah that happened to me kind of like a tin you know on a bonfire <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> and it was scary it was so scary mm. So then I realized, okay, I have to do something about this. There is an answer. There is a solution. I just have no idea where to start. I I did receive a book of, from a friend. It was a, a French neurologist and psychiatrist that had written, you know, natural healing from burnout, depression, and anxiety. Started reading that and made a lot of sense about food, exercise, omega-3 things like that. And then I read about heart coherence. Have you heard about Heart Math Institute? Institute. I haven't. No. Explain. Uh, it's mm. a brill they do research on the heart. That I, 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 there was something in that book that they had developed called heart coherence. So it's basically you think of someone or something you're really grateful for. Mm -hmm. And then you will feel a smile kind of shaping on your lips and when that happens you focus down onto into your heart and feel gratitude towards your heart and when that happens you know you get that parasympathetic and the sympathetic system and then the communication between the brain and the heart yeah going like it should because at any given point there's more information going from your heart to your head than the other way around Mm -hmm. And I had severe heart palpitations every night. And all of a sudden, within a minute or two, I could change that. Wow. And that was, oh, so if I change the way I feel, my heart behaves differently and my thought patterns change. And that was a huge epiphany. Yeah. Yeah, and for it to change so quickly, that yeah. must have because, felt like magic. Yes, because I had been trying to change my thoughts using willpower. Uh, and that was just exhausting. Mm -hmm. But by changing my emotions, I could change the thinking. So it was getting the whole thing that it was upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're starting with neuroscience rather than the psychology. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then I was down the rabbit hole, you know. Yeah. And so <laughs> is this at still at the same time as you're working? You hadn't stopped work at that stage, but you're just dealing with your burnout? Oh, I, by then, that was an old job. I had told my boss to fire me because I realized I have to do something new. Went back to school, got another job in management development so now I'm working and I'm trying out this and then I I landed on this strange website about, about tapping yes 
This is 2006. No one is tapping. And there was this manual. It was 86 pages long. And it basically said, tapping works for everything. <laughs> and it's like on page I don't know, 84 or something, it says, you probably think this sounds too good to be true. And I was going, yes, of course, I am not stupid. Nothing works for anything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it said, try it for 90 days straight and see what happens. Someone will ask you what you've been doing. Mm. And I took that challenge. <laughs> and by the end of 90 days, this was in January 2006. My parents were still living in Norway. They came to visit us for Easter break in our new house. And first time they'd come to your new house, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and there we are eating and my, my mother just looks at me across the table and she says, Monica, what have you done? And I'm like, well, she's, it's, it's a new kitchen, you know. The, the, there's nothing here that has been changed since she was here last time because she's never been here. <laughs> <laughs> what is she talking about? <laughs> I could not, like, I did not make the connection. And she said, your posture is so much better. And then I was like, ooh, right. Because that's something a mother would notice, right? Yeah. And then I kind of got confirmation that whatever I was doing, which was basically just working on my emotions, that that actually created a shift in my body and in my mind as well. And with my health, because I had like this long list of physical symptoms. And I never did any conscious work on my physical symptoms but they did go away oh interesting tell us about can you tell us about some of those what they were oh oh yeah I had called gastritis okay I had rashes and eczema and allergies I basically couldn't have fruit or salads oh greens had to be boiled I had severe like hay fever and you know like from May 1st and into August, if it was a sunny day, I would basically have to stay indoors. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes my whole face would get swollen. I also had panic attacks and anxiety. Yes, I was just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, the list kept on going on and on and yes. on. Yeah. But you had started in the January tapping. You did your 90 days, so January, February, March. And at the end of March, getting very close to May, the hay fever season, mm -hmm. did you, have you ever suffered with hay fever again? Or is it just calm? Well, down? it took a few years. You know, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it, that wasn't sold in 90 days, but mm -hmm. in a couple of years, that did go down like significantly. Mm. And today I have salads and fruit every day. Wonderful. So that was just, I think, my body was so in defense, trying desperately to protect me. So it's basically a fear issue. Mm, interesting. Mm. Interesting. I, I was living the first 30 years of my life in complete hypervigilance. And of course, the body has some physical reactions to that. I also had chronic pain, which is when you push stuff down, <laughs> things happen. It has to come out somewhere, doesn't it? And it yeah. comes out in the body. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that what you're doing yeah. is not up here. It starts here. And if it's starting here and it's not being let out, it goes down in here. And <laughs> it does manifest somehow. Yeah, it's got to. Mm. It has to. <gasps> So when your mum said that, you were like, aha, uh -huh, it's the tapping. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I was like, well, you see, I, I've been doing the thing, right? I couldn't even, like, back then, I didn't even have the words to, to explain what it was or, or why it worked. I, I was just observing on me that, okay, this seems to be working. Yes, yeah. And there was no science. It was just, okay. It works. Why not continue? Mm. Okay. 
So there's your aha moment. There's your, this is working on me. This is working for me, mm -hmm. which is where a lot of coaching comes from, isn't it? It's like, I know this is working for me. I can now share something. How did that then transition into what you did, Monica? Because that's yes. part of what you do, isn't it? Yes. So I did become a tapping practitioner as soon as Gary Craig released that opportunity. And there was just this very small window because he was retiring. So he was sending out these messages, right? I have now, I'm working with my daughter and we are going to allow people to get certified in this, but hey, I'm retiring. <laughs> so was, there was this tiny window. So I did get certifications. And then I started telling people what, about what I was doing and trying to build a business around it. I was like, whenever people understand what I can do, they will throw money at me, right? <laughs> that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> like all the mistakes you make, you think you have it all figured out, right? Yes. Uh, and I realized I had massive, massive blocks to stepping up, being seen, earning, charging, money, all of that. Oh, wow. Okay, so, just a few yes. blocks in your way then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I was done. <laughs> <laughs> like the, 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 how we, like the level of delusion, right? One can live under. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I really thought I was done trying to build a business, and it kind of all just, like all of this stuff came back up to the surface because that's what happens as you evolve, as you grow, right? You break through and get yourself out of, this is my comfort zone. And now I'm on the other side of that. I'm growing my comfort zone. But then all of a sudden it gets too big for your nervous system. And your nervous system goes, wee -oh, wee -oh, wee -oh, right? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Danger. You're way out of your league. Get back in and your amygdala hijacks your brain and you basically become stupid and you start making all of these mistakes. And, and so that happened. And then I realized, okay, there is something about money, right? So it's then I trained with Margaret Lynch, who does a lot of mm, tapping EFT for money. And I became this tapping into wealth coach. So I did all of this work around money. Mm -hmm. because money issues never have anything to do with money. They're about mm -hmm. everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a whole, and so I was doing this while working. So I remember when I got my EFT practitioner certificate, we had to tap with 100 people. So I would basically go in the office. We had two floors filled with people, crowded with people. And I would just knock on doors and say, hey, I'm trying to get my certification. <laughs> Do you have an ache or a pain or a phobia or anything you want to get rid of? <laughs> and I bet you got some funny looks, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why am I going to tell you that, right? <laughs> I can be really charming. So, so <laughs> you are really charming. I am, right? <laughs> so, you are. Like, Hello. <laughs> would you mind helping me? You're doing it for me, <laughs> you know. So, I did get like a hundred people, and I had to write down what I had done, how, what I'd done with them, what kind of tapping we did, the phobias, the fears, the pains, the aches, all of that. And with some of them, it would not work because they were doing it to help me. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So they were doing like the physical movement yes. of touching points in their face, looking at me as if I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so, so, so there was a lot of trying out and failing, trying this and failing. And, and then, of course, I understood I needed a business coach. I've been through so many business coaches. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, it's been a journey. And then both doing, you know, being in a job with quite big demands on dealing with problem solving and 
people and all of that and then doing trying to build my business on the side yeah which was very fr frustrating for, for quite a few years yes and when you, you, you say quite a few because there will be li people listening in wanting to grow their business or they've started growing their business and they're just at that stage where they're going now I've got it all sussed I've got everything ready I've got everything ready to go everybody's going to want what I've got they're mm -hmm. going to come knocking on my door. They're going to throw money at me because what I've got, I know I can change the world with this. I know because we do when we get that. It's like, I know I can help so many people. But there's a stage and there's time. So from when you got started to when you felt like I'm really getting some traction here, was that a few years? Was it a few months? Can you? Oh, that was years. Um, that was, yeah, I was putting my toes in the water mm -hmm. not really jumping right fear again yes of course who am i to because it's the oh i can do it and then you fail and then you go like oh i can't do it right mm -hmm. yeah so now i've been in the game for 15 years but i would say maybe it's yeah, I, I I did even fire my boss twice, and I fell flat on my face the first time. Like really flat on my face, partnered up with someone, went over the pond, invested money. Yeah, came back. The person I partnered up with took all of the leads. Everything I came back. With nothing, just heartbroken. Yeah, I was gonna and ashamed. Thing. So much shame. And you know, like we always talk about everything that worked out. But it's, it's yeah. It's important to know the other side. Yes. Definitely. There are ups and downs in everybody's, however glossy somebody looks on the outside and you think, oh my goodness, they're an overnight success. Everything works for them. All they've got to do is put their suitcase on the floor and they will get 50 people going, can I come and work with you? It doesn't happen like that. And we, look, I, I really believe we spend too much energy talking about all of the success because that's what we want to project out into the world, right? Sure, yeah. And building a business is really hard. It's risky. You do get, especially if you're trying to build something that's a bit different, that's mm. not mainstream, that's new, right? There will be attacks. Like both of my, I know Gary Craig had when he launched EFT, the tapping that the, the version of tapping that is most famous these days, you know, he got a lot of attack. I know that. Mm. So there will be people that will be provoked if you go out and do something that's different, right? Mm. And, and almost every business coach you, you work with will tell you this is how it's done. This is the standard in the industry. Everyone is doing this. If someone is telling you this is what everyone's doing, don't do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> don't. Like, and they can be so convincing. Yeah. And, and you can feel it. Sometimes you can feel it in your spine, right? It's like, it's off. It sounds bad, but they say it with so much conviction. Yes. You buy into it because this is what everyone, this is, yeah, this is how it's done. This is what everyone is doing. That's my childhood upbringing. When I went to my parents and said, I want to do this or that because everyone else is doing it, right? That did not fly with my parents. I should have remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but you did at some point. Yes. go oh yeah let's that's pattern recognition or something yes. it's, it's yeah. very similar it's like oh that happened over there this is happening now oh yeah okay yeah. so I know not to take any notice of that now I remember mm. that for the future because yes. there's a pattern there yeah because it needs to be authentic for you yes 
Yeah. And, and if, if, if you're trying to implement someone else's system and it doesn't feel authentic for you, it will shine through whenever you speak. Yes. And the opposite. Yeah. Because when you speak on what you do, it shines through you and your eyes and your face lights yeah. up. And you, you can hear it in someone's voice. Yeah. You can see it in their face. Yeah. In their eyes. Yes. Yeah. And they're not doing it. Oh, this is going to make me a lot of money. That's why I'm doing it. It's no. It might make me a lot of money, which would be great bonus. And there's nothing wrong with money. Money is a good thing because look at what you can do with money. It's just a, mm -hmm. a lovely energy to be out there mm -hmm. and to circulate. But I'm doing this because I've got the joy and the love and the passion for it and I know it's helped me so I know it can help other people yeah. yeah yeah and so tell me why entrepreneurs and why high performance that what the reasons that you've gone for those yeah. two for the market yeah. so, so I started when I started tapping I started working with stress management I dealt with phobias and fears I worked with athletes. I had a client who got a Swedish gold medal in, in archery, which was really fun. But I was not passionate enough about any of those. Ah, okay. I love chaos and mess. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my house. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, you know, like, like when things are put in, when things are in system and, and working and operating I get bored right and, and entrepreneurship is messy yes I'm living it and it really takes everything you got and I love digging into that and it's how I, I understood I am a high performer. I just didn't understand that, right? I am a coach. I remember I went back to my hometown in Norway and I told my first ever best friend, like we've been best friends since before we could speak. Love that. And, and, and I told her, you know, like, Elizabeth, you know what, I'm going to be coach. And she looked at me and she has these, like, her eyes are huge and green. And she looked at me and she said, but Monica, you've always been a coach. Wow. You've always coached me. You did that all the time. And it hit me so hard. It's like Steve Levy said, he's, he, he says like this, you don't find your purpose, you discover it. Ah, yes, yes. It, it's, it's on the inside all the time. You you live it, it comes so natural to you, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And what do I heard something yesterday was, if you don't, I think I was talking to you as well about it last time we spoke, was I don't see, and people will probably resonate with this, I don't see myself as other people see me. Yeah. And so someone was saying yesterday, Go to the five people that you feel know you the best and ask them how they would introduce you, what kind of person you are, how they see you, and then you will see who you are. So like your friend going, but you've always been a coach. It's like, yeah. come on, what are you talking about? You're going to be a coach. You are a coach. Yes. I've been doing it all my life. Yeah. I just didn't know it was a thing. I'm from the west coast of Norway, like everyone in my family, they were sailors or fishermen or, or preachers, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you go out on the sea and you, you find some fish or you die. You know, it's like very much a survival upbringing. Mm. And, and we, we bring that conditioning with us, believing that this is my identity. Yeah. It's not who I am. No. And so, this is basically what I do today. I, I, I see people, I hear what they're not saying. Do for everyone else what you needed the most help with yourself. 
Yeah. And so when you say you hear what they're not saying, do you get kind of messages or you just read it in their posture and their faces or are you reading between the lines with that? Well, I've been I've been doing it for half a century or more. <laughs> and then, of course, I've read up on, you know, like the nervous system. I really know my way around the nervous system these days. So there's no, it, it seems like magic. It isn't. I have clients tell me, oh, that's magic. All you do is magic. No, it's not. <laughs> but it feels but, like it. <laughs> it. But it feels like it because we can create huge results in a very short time when we don't have to use the cognitive mind for linear thinking. Mm. The nervous system doesn't really care about time or lin linear things happening in a linear way or logic, right? I think that's one of the, the biggest misperception we have that the unconscious is sort of a lesser quality of consciousness or but it's just it doesn't have direct access to to language so it's kind of difficult to access right i speak uh, broken english but i'm fluent in nervous system <laughs> you're fairly fluent in english too Monica. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's somebody listening and they're thinking i'd like to really dig a bit deeper with Monica and mm -hmm. find out how to work with you and what you can do for me. How can they get in touch with you? What's the best place? We will put all the details in the description box as well. Well, right now, the best place to find me is LinkedIn. Right. That's where I spend most of my time when I'm online. Mm -hmm. uh, send me a message. Tell me that you heard this podcast. Yes. Yeah. And convince me you're fun to work with and inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prerequisite to working yes. with Monica is you have to be fun. <laughs> and inspiring. And inspiring, of course. There's no other way. Yeah. Yeah. And you can achieve so much more when you're happy, right? Like yes. When you're happy, then you get that. It's energy again. And we mm -hmm. speak a lot mm -hmm. about the energy side of things. Yeah. but. When you have got that happy energy, you're more likely to draw all the good stuff to you. And it's your coach is going to want to work with you because you're fun to work with. Yes. And, and the more of the pain that we can get rid of and, and leave behind us, the more future focused there can be. Mm. Yes. So, so the less attached we get to that old story about everything that happened, the more energy we have to move forward and create and have an impact in the world and so somebody initially works with you I think you said is it a six yeah I never work with anyone for less than six sessions because then they can make an informed choice if they want to move further or not yeah that's the tricky thing about energy right you can have one session and you feel amazing and you've just scratched the surface. Yeah. So I would be doing people a disservice. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you to our audience for tuning in and listening in. There will be another video coming up on screen. So do hop over there and I'll see you over there. And in the meantime, have the most awesome day. And if you want to get in touch with Monica, you'll find her down in the description box, but you'll also find her on LinkedIn. So Good luck with that. She is absolutely awesome to work with. She's super fun and very inspiring. Take care. Bye for now.